Today I'm giving you my top 10 hacks for doing both photo and video coverage on a wedding day. Taylor Jackson. Shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well known in this community. You're an amazing photographer. This month on Patreon, I'll actually be doing a full length hybrid photography course, which means both doing photography as you would normally do, but also shooting a small highlight film for the couple, something usually around three minutes, 30 seconds. And this might seem like a very ambitious thing for one human being, or maybe yourself and your second photographer to do, but quite honestly, you've probably already learned composition and you know what exposure is and you know which moments to capture as a wedding photographer already. So it's actually very easy to bridge that gap. The huge benefit is obviously, actually there's a number of benefits. The number one benefit, I guess, business-wise, is that you can now charge more money for your wedding photography days. Uh, number two, you can differentiate yourself from your competition. Not many people, if any, are really doing both photo and video coverage as one person. A lot of people just subcontract it out. Personally, I find that to be incredibly scary and I would be terrified to hire somebody else in to come and shoot a thing and for me to put my name on it and deliver it. What I prefer to do is to do both myself so that I know my product at the end of the day is going to be great. And then number three, your clients are actually gonna be a lot happier. I found that my couples that are a little bit on the fence of whether they wanna do a video or not and they don't really have the budget to hire a full video team and they see that I can do video as well and they're like, ah, like maybe last minute we're gonna bump up. To a video package and all of them are super happy that they did. That's usually the email that I get. It's like, we love our photos, but we're so happy that we also got the video. So that's something to think about if you're interested in adding hybrid coverage to your wedding day. Let's get into the hacks. So number one is to get stable footage. This camera actually has in-body stabilization in it, which means hand-holding is a little bit easier, but you should still focus some energy on actually getting stable footage. The easiest way for me is to take this strap and you can just wrap this around your arm and hold your camera out like this. And if you have kind of these three points of stabilization, which is what you're looking for. One point of stabilization, two points of stabilization, three points of stabilization. You can take some really, really stable footage even if you're shooting at something like 1.4. Another way to do it is by flipping out the LCD. If you have a flip out LCD, putting that up against your chest, and again, three points of stabilization. Get that nice, smooth footage. The other way you can do it is third point of stabilization can be your head if you have an electronic viewfinder. Uh, just by doing this, you're gonna get some incredibly stable footage as well. Number two, if you fail to get stable footage or something just happens and you point the camera and you're a little bit shaky, you can go into your editing program and use a thing, at least in Premiere, called Warp Stabilize and it stabilizes your footage in post a little bit. Again, you wanna get as good of quality capture as you can out of the camera, but if you fail that a little bit, this will clean it up and sometimes it actually has some really dramatically amazing results. I also use Warp Stabilizer a lot with no motion selected if I wanna emulate a tripod shot. So if I'm trying to get a tripod shot of a venue or something like that, all I do is click no motion and it gets rid of any small motion that I might have by hand holding. The next one is huge for me and it is essentially the reason how I'm able to do hybrid coverage and do a good job of it. I shoot everything in slow motion, so I shoot everything in full HD at 60 frames a second. I'm not too interested in doing 4K yet, maybe a couple of years down the road. For now, 1080, 60 frames a second is good for me. What I do is I slow that 60 frames a second down to 24 frames a second in post. And for every second of footage you shoot, you actually get over two seconds of final footage to put in the film, which means you get to shoot a little bit less. You get to select the shots that are the best. And also I think the most important thing is that when you slow moments down like this, you actually have time to see the things that you may have not seen in real life. I, I feel like it's a better way to tell the story of a wedding day. The next hack or just tool that I use a lot is going into crop mode. Some of them will zoom into just a regular 1.5 times and some will zoom into something like 3.0, which is awesome because while shooting in DX mode or crop mode might bring the megapixels down to the photos, you're still able to shoot full HD footage in crop mode on most cameras. This really does help me out when I'm trying to just get coverage of the ceremony and I don't wanna be running around too much that if I get to the end of my 70 to 200, that I can easily go into crop mode and then bump that to a 300 and get the shot a little bit tighter, a little bit more of what I was kind of looking for without actually getting in front of anybody during the ceremony. One other super common question is how you do both photo and video coverage at the exact same time during something like a first kiss if you're by yourself. The obvious and easiest answer is to have your second photographer rolling video footage if you're taking photos of for the first kiss. I always rank photo as the most important thing of the day when I'm hired. So I will always be getting those photo frames and I will have the second photographer roll on the first kiss. Another thing you can do is you can do the little camera flip here. So if you have something like a 50 millimeter lens on this camera, you can just be rolling video while you're actually taking photos like this. So you can just set it to AFS or you can just put on manual focus and just something like this. And I know where my frame is and I'm taking the same frame essentially 
with this camera up here as I'm taking down here. And then I just flip the footage and post. There's no lens on this camera, but you get the idea. Another hack is uh, something that I actually really like a lot. It changes the feeling of your footage and you're able to do some camera moves that you would not normally be able to do. I come from a skateboard snowboard background. So having a handle on top of your camera, a lot of the professional video cameras come with this style of grip on top of the camera and you can get one that attaches to your hot shoe. And now by using gravity, you're able to get those moving slider style shots that you don't need a slider for because it's a pain to set up. And if you're shooting 60 frames a second and just a little bit of motion like that will go a long way. This one's not necessarily a hack just for hybrid photo video coverage, but it's a hack kind of for all photography coverage. If you have a groom that is bald, shaves his head and he's getting a lot of reflection from the sun, you can use a polarizing filter to cut down some of that reflection. Uh, it works in video as well. I find that if you, you can't really recover a whole lot of highlights in video if you go too hot. So by using a circular polarizer, you can actually bring a little bit of that down. You use it for family formals too. Surprisingly helpful and definitely something worth having in your bag. The next hack is if you are shooting a camera with a slower buffer. I used a Nikon D750 for a long time and it has a notoriously slow buffer. Uh, Sony now, well, they take amazing video files. The buffer is a little bit slow. So if you're taking five RAW files and trying to switch to video and start recording, it'll make you wait until it writes all those RAW files to the card. So so what I do when I'm working with a camera with a slow buffer is I actually shoot the video clips first. So for instance, the couple at the end of the aisle is like about to celebrate and come back down towards us after the ceremony. When they put their hands up and have that celebration, I'm going to capture that in video, then switch to photo mode as they walk down so that I'm able to kind of get the best coverage possible um, based on my technical limitations. The obvious great solution would be to just get something like this Nikon Z6 that is really fast at switching or the Nikon D850, which is what I primarily use for all hybrid coverage. For now at least, until one of the Nikon digital SLRs gets in body stabilization, which I think is coming soon. Some other hacks you can do to hide elements that you might not want is one, you can use your phone, you can use your little light here and you can just kind of make some flare. You can hide elements around the frame that you don't want there or you can just add an interesting moving light to a boring scene. You can also use the screen of your phone to do a little bit of a reflective surface and create some interesting things that might not happen in real life but I find they're very helpful to hide elements in busy messy spaces like getting ready rooms or just places that you don't have control over and you can't just walk around and clean everything. Then you can hide and make some interesting kind of art based on the limitations around you. All right, and this brings us to our last one. Actually, I'll give you one pre-last one, and this isn't really a hack, this is just good practice. Don't use illegal music that you're not allowed to use. Go on Musicbed and find the best music possible. It's really inexpensive, and there is a lot of great stuff up there as stock music now, which didn't used to be the case. It used to be very difficult to find music that actually felt good, but educate your couples and let them know that if you're using illegal music that it's gonna get taken down off of Facebook and Instagram and wherever they post it, and it takes advantage of another artist's copyright. Last hack is this GoPro 8. Uh, I used this a little while ago. I think I was using the GoPro 6. And rather than setting up a full like Steadicam or setting up some sort of stabilizer to put your camera on and to balance it and to go and get those shots, to have this GoPro 8 in your back pocket, the gimbal-like stabilization of this camera is really incredible. And as long as you have light, as long as you're outside, if you wanna get those wide tracking shots to add that motion, kind of that cinematic flair to your videos, this is the easiest way to do it. What you can't do with a GoPro is all you get is the wide shot. You don't get that nice shallow depth of field that really does add a lot. But I think the simplicity of using this GoPro, one, gets you faster, easier shots, and two, really genuinely improves the client experience that you're not gonna make them do the same like movements over and over again to try to get like the perfect shot Shot with your shallow depth of field and everything. And while it might look amazing, I would really just rather get the couple back to their day and to have them for maybe 15 minutes total um, on the wedding day to get everything that I need with the two of them. All right, that is all for the hacks. The best one and the easiest takeaway for doing video is just to get a strap and just do this. I feel like that's the one thing that really kind of made my video footage go from okay to a heck of a lot better. And if you're interested in the full hybrid course, which begins with like a full breakdown of all gear required, followed by an on-camera wedding day that explains a lot more in depth and in detail about how to do both photo and video coverage, followed by an editing video, which shows you everything that you need to know about how to put this film together in post-production, followed by the last week that's going to be all about sales and how to actually make more money and how to market yourself as a hybrid shooter, because quite honestly, not a lot of my couples really understand it in the beginning. They're like, how does one person 
do both tasks. And it actually requires a little bit to get your couples over that barrier of trusting you with kind of both activities on the wedding day. That's all for today. If you're interested in learning more about my process, head over to Patreon. There's lots of stuff up there. There's like 200 videos, all of my pricing documents, all kinds of stuff, my contracts up there. There's a lot, there's a full client meeting with audio that you can listen to. There's, there's a lot honestly up there and there's only more to come over this year. So I appreciate everyone that's already joined. And if you have not yet joined, uh, hopefully I'll see you over there soon for the hybrid photography course. If not, we're gonna get into some pricing next month and then destination weddings the following month. There's, there's gonna be a lot over this year. See you there.